Hello, I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. No, I took your line. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. You paused. I was real. <laughs> you paused and I was like, oh, the next part's mine. <laughs> It was for dramatic effect. I didn't expect you to steal it. I stole it. <laughs> and I was I'm like, I don't usually say that. <laughs> Where we take your favorite pop culture obsession one nibble at a time. And enjoy it oh, no. one nibble at a time. <laughs> All right. Well, they know it already. And if this is the first time you're joining us, I'm sorry. This is, we never get it together. So. No, like this season, we cannot get that intro together. What if we didn't get it together? It was the whole last season. Right, here it so is. So just <laughs> listen to that. Hello. Wowzers. Yeah, we just, um, we did Comic-Con uh, day one, the uh, Thursday professional day. It was fun. It was fine. It was cool. It's a good time. It was good to be back. We went two years ago. Obviously, there wasn't an in-person one last year. So it felt very good. Like, this is probably the first time I was excited to take that long walk from Penn Station to Javits. Yeah, it's like 20-something minutes. <laughs> It was nice. It was nice to be in the city for something fun and not like an errand because we have not gone into the city just to go because of COVID. And it's not comfortable walking around everywhere with the mask 20, like the entire time you're on a train and then in there. It's just like my nose is raw from getting rubbed. Yeah. Don't like it. But Plus that, I have that was beard fun. hair sticking out of places. Yeah. Beards get real messed up in masks. Yeah. It's I not doing like this little like, flip. <laughs> on the bottom. It looks real weird. You could pro- You know that <laughs> gif of that guy eating ramen out of his beard? You could at least yeah. put like a taquito yes. in it. Yeah. <laughs> it. Oh, a taquito. I do love a taquito. Yeah. All right. After this, taquitos. Yeah. So <laughs> before we get into everything, <laughs> make sure you're following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Upbite of. We have a Patreon and a Apple subscription if you want to support the show in any way. Get bonus episodes, bonus stuff. We have some exciting bonus episodes coming up. So keep an eye out on that for those Patreon members that are listening now. Leave a rating and review because that's always nice. Yes, please. And we still have a Discord. We have a Discord. If you want to come clickety-clack with our listeners, you can talk and chat and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's fun. It's a lot of fun. And later in the episode, we're going to rank all of the episodes of What If so far. So if that's your jam, skip to the end, then you'll get that. (laughs) What if we ranked all the What If episodes? Well, it's a certainty, I hope. Well, it, it's all a certainty. It's just in different multiverses. Mm-hmm. Well, my brain. <laughs> all right. So let's take a look back at What If Episode 8. What If Ultron won? Black Widow and Hawkeye are battling a gang of Ultron sentries in a dystopian wasteland. Beep, oh, beep. They try to connect to the hive mind, but find that they can't because Ultron is out of their service area. Womp, womp. He got bored after destroying the universe, sat silently, and then heard the Watcher narrating his destruction. Fun. He breaks through the multiverse wall, and a fight ensues between the two. Meanwhile, Natasha and Clint look for a humanoid virus, aka Zola, and plan to override Ultron's system. But before they can, Barton sacrifices himself so Romanoff can escape and finish the job. How it should have been. (laughs) Ultron looks to have the upper hand, so the Watcher pays a visit to jewel-encapsulated Dr. Dark Strange from episode four to ask for help. Yay. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Anytime he's involved. Okay, side note. Mm -hmm. I know this is going, this this has to do with Dr. Strange. At Comic-Con, the only thing I wanted to make sure I got was a pin because Disney pins goes to Comic-Con every year and they always have all these different types of pins. I wanted one Dr. Strange pin. Just one. And there was none. I mean, I don't even think I saw one piece of Doctor Strange merch in all of Comic-Con. This this is my only grievance with Comic-Con this year. And I know that the world is really weird. But it was, it felt different because there was no, like, uh, how do we put it? Like, booths from Marvel, DC, and... Nintendo. Nintendo, there was nothing like that. And it was great that all these, like, creators got to have their own booths. But it it did seem weird because I was like, where is... These company, like, where are the yeah. people that kind of facilitate all of the big news? Yeah, like that. Exactly, that's the thing. Is that it feels like the the whole a big point of Comic Con is that you're there to see what's coming out. So right. if it's a figure or a video game or a movie or a television show, 
you're you're going to Comic Con to to see the reveal of these things, mm -hmm. and without those bigger companies there, or really many companies at all, there was no reveal. Like we even went to a panel that you had to register for in advance for the Sandman Audible Act Two that's coming out, and they weren't even there. It was just a recorded Zoom interview that they yeah. showed in a big room. So should again, we, should we like do like a whole like? Do you guys want a bonus episode on this on on a Comic Con? Derek and Noah's Comic Con visit. <laughs> Comment below if you want a bonus episode, <laughs> and you know we'll we'll do it. I mean, it, we can't guarantee it's going to be like an hour long, but. No. You know, we can really talk this out. We but can talk we, about it. We did scour this one big enamel pin booth for anything Doctor Strange, any Doctor Strange pin, and there was none. Out of thousands of pins that were on these cork thousands. boards, there was, there was tons of Pokemon, lots of Thor. They had Gravity Fall pins, but they didn't have Doctor Strange or Steven Universe, oh, I will yeah. point out. There was a lot. To be fair, this is Disney, but it's just like... I'm I'm confused why there's these other pins. Like, why is it called Disney pins, but then you have Pokemon on there? Well, I'm yeah. very confused that they're pin sets. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Uh, anyway. We still had a good time. Spoilers. Yep. <laughs> Spoilers ahead. Alerted. All right. Let us officially take a bite of What If, Episode 9, What If the Watcher Broke His Oath. Season finale. Season 1 of What If. It has all come to this. As usual, I kind of like to talk about the voice cast a little bit. Everybody has been the same in this episode. The only new person really is Gamora, Cynthia McWilliams. That's really the only new person. And some of these characters like Ultron and Peter Quill, Tony Stark, Shuri, Natasha, they're all played by different people, but they've been the same throughout this entire thing. But with Gamora being different, none of the Guardians of the Galaxy people voiced their animated counterparts. And I'm I'm curious if it has to do with contracts. We know they're coming back for Guardians 3 in the MCU, the live action. But maybe there was just some weird contract thing where they were like, they're technically not like in contract yet or blah, 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 whatever. Business stuff. Business jargon. Business dinners. So... That's really it. That's all the voice. Yeah, that's the shortest one. I Haley have. Atwell is back. Who? Captain Carter. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody's the same. But that's what I'm saying. That's what's so exciting. It's like she was oh, really right, great, right. and she voiced the character, and she came back for for all of it, and 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 that was cool. And of course, it's Chadwick Boseman's very very last performance as T'Challa, which I mean, I think there were some parts in this season one where it's like this is. If this was to be somebody's like character send off, great. Like, what if T'Challa was Star, Star Lord? Star Lord. God, I like these names with these characters. I could just make <laughs> so many just buttons with these different character names. <laughs> Star Lord and Star Stony Lord. Tark. Welcome to your local grocery store. I'm Star Lord. And what was Peter Parker's? What did I? It's like Peter Borkers or something oh, like that. Yeah, I forgot that one was good. Re rewind the tape. I don't even remember what episode it was. It was probably the zombies one. Yeah, it had to be. But anyway, there's there's been some great scenes with this actor doing their send off for this character even before anybody knew it. So it does suck, but I feel like he he did the character justice. The MCU really let him shine one last yeah, time. Yeah, I mean that character was in the What If series out of was in a third of the What If episodes. More than Captain Carter. Yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Pretty cool. I want more. Mm. Yeah. So this episode kicks off with Captain Carter, who's experiencing the events of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, in her reality. So she's pretty much gone the same exact route that Steve Rogers did, which is kind of cool. It's kind of neat that, you know, that's how much their moral compass aligned. The relationships might be a little different. The villains might look a little different, but they're on the same trajectory. So that's pretty cool. And she's besties with Black Widow. I know. I like it. Me too. I mean, Steve was kind of really, he was really close to Nat, but I feel like Peggy and Nat seem just a little closer, even in just this little interactions we've seen with this one. So I, I like it. I love in all of the multiverses, Black Widow will always have different hairstyles. 
Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> f- what was it? was it Winter Soldier where she had the just the straight pin straight pin <laughs> straight. Prior to that, it was just curly madness. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> so weird. It took a while for her to get her hair right, and then finally they were like, you know what? Just have it normal. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we even had blonde for a bit too, right? But yeah. we kind of settled on the red. Started yeah. as red, settled on the red. I ca- I like the the final two looks with her. I liked the blonde. I liked it a lot, and then I liked it in Endgame where it was the blonde to the red, mm. and then that like Katniss side braid. Oh, you know, I love a Katniss side braid. I like that one. So after burning the Lumerian star, <laughs> yeah, Lumi Lumi Lumi. She finds, I'm not going to go back. <laughs> Good for you. She finds and begins to battle Bad Rock, but the fight is cut short by the Watcher coming to recruit her. I love, hey. I love the scene. They're, they're fighting. It's great. I love it when a Captain America fights Bad Rock because it, you know there's going to be a lot of kicks. Just flying kicks everywhere. Oh, spinning, jumping, flipping. Love it. And yeah. just like in the live action Warner Soldier when Steve was fighting him, he also put down his shield, and she did the same thing. And it was like, oh, no, we're going to go hand-to-hand with this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, the the guy who voiced Batroc is the actor who is mm-hmm. Batroc. So yep. that was fun for yeah. the two lines that he had. <laughs> I mean, I, so was Ego. He was the same actor that played. It, it, it's Kurt weird. Russell? Yes. It's weird that it's like, oh, okay. They so that's the one, one line. The one Guardians of the Galaxy character was Kurt Russell playing Everywhere Ego. that I saw was him. So unless I'm wrong... Comment below if I'm wrong. <laughs> that would be the only Guardians person of everybody. Because his character's over, so he doesn't need contract negotiations. There you go. They're like, hey, 10,000 if you say these two words. Got it. I can do it for my cell phone, right? Perfect. <laughs> Seeing, I, I just love, especially in this opening scene, is anyone else's like favorite sound of vibranium shield flying through the air and just smacking goons in the head? It's just such an, it's such a nice sound. I love it. This is completely jumping ahead, and I apologize, but I loved the sound the Infinity Stone made whenever it was flying through the air later in this episode. It sounded like a Mario coin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did. What a fun choice. (laughs) (laughs) So the Watcher recruits her. Oh, The Watcher then heads to the reality where T'Challa becomes Star-Lord to pick up the Wakandan Prince, who had just saved Peter Quill from the clutches of his father, Ego. Again, like, this is something that we need to study here. What? This is how easy it is to de- destroy a villain. You Put a bomb on their you chest. Fly <laughs> you just throw a bomb on their chest and you roll out. It's it's really funny because <laughs> also in the Guardians 2, the Dairy Queen also gets blown up. So it's a f- funny parallel. Like, that Dairy Queen was never meant to survive in at least two realities. Absolutely. Sad. These things are finite. It's true. There are some things you can't get over, and it's the destruction of a Dairy Queen. <laughs> the Watcher called him Star Lord T'Challa. Is that weird to any? Like, why do they call him Star Lord T'Challa as if there's another Star Lord? Well, it, it's interesting. Right? Yeah, well, I felt like in the second episode of What If, Star Lord wasn't so much a name as it was a title. Like Captain Admiral Star Lord, like he is Star Lord T'Challa. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I guess it's like, did they? Oh, Prince maybe the Ravengers made it a rank or something like that. Yeah, because I mean, oh, because Peter Quill kind of gives him that name, and that's that was one of the whole things in Guardians One when he first introduces himself. He's like, maybe you you may have heard of me, and he's like, who are you? And he's like, Star Lord, and they all laugh at him. So I was just like, I thought we called him Star Lord T'Challa. You know what I mean? It was like something mm. that like everybody outside of like the reality right. of the it's show. It's like did. this is very it's like they're aware that there's another multiverse with a different Star Lord. Right. I was just like, oh, he calls him Star Lord T'Challa. Okay. That was just weird. I I don't think I heard anybody else say it. Anyway, whatever. The next destination on the Watcher's trip is to somewhere we have not seen in what if so far. They go to Nidvilleir. He finds Tony Stark and Gamora working to build an Infinity Gauntlet aside a tree, which we've seen from Infinity War, which Thor went to to make a new weapon, which was Stormbreaker, blah, 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 all that. So Uh. when I watched this episode, something seemed off to me. I was confused, one, because Marvel released Gamora as the character poster for this episode, which is weird. 
Because I would even argue to put The Watcher or oh, yeah. Ultron or even Doctor Strange or Peggy on it over Gamora because she was hardly in it. Hardly in it. And I was like, what? Who? Who is this Stark? Who is this Gamora? This is weird. Why is she wearing Thanos' armor? What? What's going on? Apparently, and there's some interviews going out there and there's some talk, AC Bradley, the writer for the show, had said that an episode did get cut, which was possibly moved to season two, and the Gamora one was the episode that got cut. I So... Th- th- this, this really grinds my gears here, Oh, people. does it? Does it? Absolutely. <laughs> Because I have no emotional attachment to this character who becomes a main plot point in this assembly of this team where I know all of them except for this one. She's just there for – she has the thing that's supposed to help them destroy it. I mean, that's like, like – you know, but, I, I agree. But you like, but yeah. Right. The, uh, of the pie, the pie of the team, they're all f- chock full of delicious, fruity, nutty – Molassesy goodness. I was like, "Is this a, a, a fruitcake this pie? pie? What is, that? is just crust? No, each piece, no each piece of the pie is its own specific flavor. What? But this one, yeah. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know what's in it, and they're serving it to me, and I'm supposed to be fine with it. I don't care how much whopper, watcher whipped cream you put on top of it. It's not going to taste good." You had too many W's. <laughs> Alliteration got away from me, but I fought through it. Maybe Gamora fought through it. I don't know because I didn't see it. Well, she fought so hard that she has a weapon that could destroy Infinity Stones, we just, apparently. We just watch her. We just, we, she's just melting the Infinity Gauntlet. I don't know why. Yeah. Why, does, why is Tony Stark there? She has Thanos' armor on. Why is he in that Buster costume? I don't know. <laughs> what is that called? Buster costume. What is that thing called? Hulkbuster, you were right. I was close, but <laughs> but now I know why it's called Hulkbuster because Buster costume <laughs> sounds cute. The Iron Buster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It, it's weird. I love Gamora, and I love any any time I get to see her. But I think throw it's noticeable. You threw this character yeah. in there when it was like, oh, okay. It's yeah. Like I, we get plus it's female representation, man. Well, right, and we saw we got. Every episode made sense. It all tied together in the end, which we'll talk about. But she doesn't make sense being in here. It's like, it's fine. Whatever. It worked. Just one more. One more. Okay. One more. Y'all made me watch zombies for a little joke in this episode rather than introducing me to a story arc that was more important. It was also sad. I have a comment about that. (laughs) If it's about Zwanda, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> the next destination. Wait, where was talk I? right over me. <laughs> oh, I got something else about this scene. Let's go. Let's do it. Where was I? I forgot. I don't know. We talked. We started. Oh yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> this version of Gamora, who had defeated Thanos, stole his armor and destroyed the Infinity Guns with. And I love this so much when they name things after the thing that they destroy. Infinity Crusher. I love it. It's great. Hydra Stomper, Infinity Crusher. Right. Some. Th- this is one thing I love about comics. It's like they had comics. one writer for <laughs> Yeah. This is what I love about comics. It's like a Spider-Man. I know, Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a witch that wears Scarlet. Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Infinity Stone Crusher. Infinity Crusher. Quicksilver. He's has white hair and he runs real quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so easy. That's fun. <laughs> Ant-Man. Is the size of an ant, Ant Man, but also can get big. So then it gets that's confusing. confusing. That's right? confusing. They just Build had to man. throw him anyway. Giant Man. <laughs> this universe's Tony Stark briefly tries to fight the Watcher, but the big guy basically tells him, "Shut the fuck up, Stark. You aren't important here." Which I feel like Tony could have heard a few, a few little more times. I am so here for this. Yeah. I love how in this entire series, Tony Stark is either either dies or is like no. Don't. Not your time. Shh. 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 I'm, <laughs> I, I agree. I'm just, I mean, I love Tony and I love everything he did for the MCU, but there's a lot of Tony and there's still a lot of Tony, even in What If. So that's why it was very much welcome to not have him front and center and to not have Steve front and center. That's the coolest thing about the show. I just pointed that out. Just I'm say. with you. Mm-hmm. 
The Wakandan conquering Killmonger is grabbed as he prepares for his last stand against Shuri and Pepper Potts. This guy is a massive jerk and utterly treacherous, so the Watcher choosing him seems quite suspicious and questionable, and it makes sense in the end, but when it was happening, I was like, why not Shuri? Why not Okoye? I, uh, That's hello? I, yeah, agreed. Agreed. I mean, I guess in one sense, we can look at it and say he removed him from there. So he's no longer a trouble to them. But at the same time, uh, your girl Shuri and Pepper Potts were rolling up on the throne. Gonna be like, we're taking him down. Pew, we pew. didn't get that moment. We didn't get that moment. No. I mean, we might. There's still season two. And they go back to the exact moment they left. So well, Not him. Oh, yeah. No, he's in the ball. He's in a little jewel ball. The, the Sikorsky. Sikos, what is it? Sik- Sikorovsky. <laughs> <laughs> Sokovia and Crystal. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> moving on from that, my there you stupid go. word. <laughs> Finally, Thor is battling Ultron drones in Viva Las Vegas while not happy with the fact that this is ruining his date with Jane Foster. Thor ignoring the big giant bald man in the sky and screaming when the Watcher picks him up was absolutely awesome. Just imagine Chris Hemsworth screaming in the booth like that in the recording booth. <laughs> I, I just, it's, there's just, so we just had the Watcher tell tony stark nah dude and then we had the watcher in this scene shushing thor he literally goes no shush yeah (laughs) (laughs) i love that he even though the watcher looks like a giant baby all of these people are children (laughs) much taller than i thought yeah that's always been the weirdest thing about the watcher is like when he's in space or like floating around or standing there, it's like, oh, you just look like you have a big head. Little baby. But when he's around normal people, it's like, you still look small, yet you're big. Quite celestial. It's weird. Yeah, he's quite tall. I don't like it. I don't the- like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. The group arrives at the same pub that Captain Carter took Steve to in episode one. And they meet Doctor Strange Supreme before learning about their mission and being dubbed the Guardians of the Multiverse. Hey! I did think that this bar, so in the comics, one of my favorite things about Doctor Strange comics, or even most of the comics that focus on a magic person, there's a bar called The Bar With No Doors, which is a tavern located in Manhattan for sorcerers and magic users alike. Mm. And it's like a safe space for them to go. Like, villains will go there, antiheroes, good guys. Like, you'll see Scarlet Witch in there and Brother Voodoo and all. It's it's awesome. I was like, is this it? Are we finally getting it? No, it wasn't no. it. It was the same freaking pub. But there was a picture of Mephisto on the wall. What? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, what, you, you waited to say something? Don't do that. <laughs> it's always Mephisto. No, we already got a stained glass thing of a devil, and it turned out to be nothing. So, so rude. Whatever. They're going to just fuck with us at this point. Marvel's mm-hmm. like... We know what we're doing. We're there's not going like to do a, what you want. There's like a throwaway pile of ideas, and it's all the Mephisto ideas. And they just have them there. And they're like, we're never going to do anything with Mephisto, but let's just let them think. Oh, yeah. Mephisto. And from now on, if I ever see an actor that was in the X-Men movies ever come into the MCU, I'm not going to trust that it's going to be that character from the X-Men. Sorry. Not going to do it. Bonered. Bonered. We've been boned too many times, <laughs> and I don't like it. <laughs> Bone me once, shame on you. Bone me twice, shame on me. (laughs) Bone me thrice? Shame on everybody. Shame on the multiverse. (laughs) After Thor tries and fails to escape this bar, the team agrees to help and begins to debate on how they should go about it. It takes some deliberation and alternate dimension Chinese food delivery, but eventually Gamora convinces everybody that they can destroy Ultron stones using the Infinity Crusher. A device of our own creation. Quite handy, that Gamora is. Indeed. The group arrives on an uninhabited... Inhibited. Uninhabited. Uninhibited. Uninhabited. Inhibited. Whoa. (laughs) Reality. (laughs) Whatever. Reality to prepare for the battle. But after a bad and depressing speech from Mr. Strange Supreme... Thor quickly alerts Ultron to their presence by conjuring lightning, which was kind of his job, but one can say it was premature electricity. Oh, dear. (laughs) We went blue, folks. We went blue. What's that mean? It means like when your joke turns like sexual. Oh. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. I've done that a few times this season. I know. I know. I know. 
And also, I was just like, when else can I use this joke? <laughs> <laughs> However, while Ultron believes he can make quick work of the Watcher's recruits, Strange Supreme places a protection spell on everybody, granting them immunity from his attacks. This this was amazing. I love this. And if this show showed me anything, I can't wait for these characters to... I mean, they're, they're doing these things where it's like we saw Doctor Strange fight Thanos on Titan, and it was amazing in Infinity War. Loved it. It was. It's still, hands down, probably one of the best MCU action sequences there are. Shang-Chi really comes up there. But this, seeing how they, like, use their powers together to fight Ultron with, like, him multiplying Mjolnir and there's a million Mjolnir and then they go on and magnetically, like, create this giant Mjolnir ball around Ultron. I'm just like, this is so cool. I want more of this. I was really all about the protection spell. I want, like, a Saint Seiya-esque Avengers of the Multiverse arc because (laughs) their protective spells look like armor. Yeah, Captain Carter looked like Athena. T'Challa looked like a warrior prince. Thor looked like Thor. Yeah, <laughs> an Asgardian, right? <laughs> armor. Yeah, but it was cool to have him have it all glowing. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. awesome, and it kept appearing throughout the whole episode. I thought yeah. that was really, really cool. It was really cool. <laughs> During all of this, and seizing the opportunity to use sticky fingers, T'Challa steals the Soul Stone right from under Ultron's nose. As soon as the all-powerful AI notices, Strange Supreme opens a portal that brings the zombies from Episode 5, including Wanda Maximoff, to distract him while they skip out. Of course, he takes her out with ease and travels back to his original reality where the Guardians of the Multiverse are trying to destroy the Soul Stone. I have to point out (laughs) that Zwanda (laughs) wasn't able to stop this version of Ultron because she was likely distracted by the fact that he looks like Vision. There was a moment after she's done blasting him where then she kind of stops and looks at him like she knows him, which is sad because it's not Vision. It's yeah. just his magenta body. You could just you could just like see her thinking like <laughs> 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 Uh-huh. Which translates to Vision, is that you, my love? But, you know, she was a zombie, so. Barf. Brains. <laughs> Barf. No. She was like, pew, pew, pew. Actually, maybe she just stopped because she was like, this move usually kills them, but it didn't. No, I want it to be what I said it was. Yo, he's coming up in here. He's telling me that when I'm trying to make a sweet, he's like, nah. But then when he wants to make a sweet, he's like, yeah. I mean. Girl. Whatever. Free majority electricity. <laughs> anyway, hey, premature electricity is hilarious. It has the first two letters of the other one in it. It's great. Premature evacuation. Ish. No, also I'm wrong. It's about that wrong. It has the first letter of the other <laughs> word in it. <laughs> I don't know why I thought there was an L after the E. Electricity. El- Elaculation. Oh, that sounds worse. <laughs> anyway. Their plan, <laughs> as they're trying to, d- to destroy the Soul Stone, back to what we were talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their plan gets a kink in it when <laughs> Natasha arrives and steals the gem, not understanding how there could be other people on Earth. Because remember, she's from the reality where nobody else exists except for her and Clint, and then Clint bit the dust. All by myself. Yep. Captain Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, so this is what... Yep. <laughs> I'm so used to it that I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Noah's, Noah's reaction. Yep, <laughs> that's that's how we talk most of the time. I'm like, I'm like, blah blah blah, blah. and he's like, mm-hmm. I mean, yep, guys, listening. Does it sound like I'm being dismissive? Because I hope it's not. Comment below. I I'm not being dismissive. They're like, ooh, how do I put this nicely? Noah's a dick. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, we, question mark. Derek is crying a lot. So. <laughs> anyway. Cap- <laughs> anyway, uh, whatever. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Captain Carter talks her down by revealing their bond and her reality, but Ultron arrives soon after, and a fight breaks out. I do want to say Peggy mentions that she's one of the only three people Natasha trusts, and I'm assuming... And this is just me. I could be wrong. Comment below. 
let us know wh- who you think the three that she trusts are. But Clint, Peggy, and presumably Yelena, because Peggy mentions to her your da is Alexi. So it's like, okay, we know in the MCU now it's canon that she has this family. So I would assume it's those three because she took the place of Steve where we would think that our normal Natasha would have Steve, not Peggy. You know what I mean? So get those three. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Adds up. Okay. The sum is correct. (laughs) Checks out. I did the work. As this battle that they have on this apocalyptic, nobody else lives there planet is fantastic. The battles in this entire episode are great. And it's really, this whole episode was just one big long battle. Yeah. It seemed like it was kind of some little e and then more battle. It from the hot potato, soul stone hot potato, great. To su- strange supreme eating like a supernova explosion. It's amazing. It's everything I want. Oh, the shield fighting Natasha and Captain Carter each with their own shield. Bing, boom, boom, boom. Amazing. Bing. Felt sort of reminiscent of Bucky. One went high, one went low. Oh yeah. Did like whole... civil war fighting. Oh, you know. I loved it. Iron Man? That was amazing. Oh, yeah. It did remind me of this fight, particularly when they all were kind of hitting him and then leaving the screen and stuff like that. It it reminded me of Age of Ultron, mm. when they're in that rotunda scene and they all kind of Ooh, attack him at once. So I was like, oh, nice. Yeah. And I and I did like you pointed out the hot potato part with the soul stone. I really liked the angle that they chose. We were seeing it from sort of the perspective of the soul stone on the ground. So we were seeing feet. We were seeing people falling. We were seeing people get thrown over it. I Love thought it. that was a really smart decision. You don't have to have live action to play with the perspective. And these people know that. They were like, surprise, you're still entertained. And I was like, yep. <laughs> you were flailing your body a lot this time. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Ultron tries to use the time stone to get the stone back, Strange Supreme also has one to reverse it. So it doesn't really work when you both use it. Strange Supreme goes all demon Super Saiyan, and yeah. the group eventually pins Ultron and gets the Infinity Crusher in place. But Ultron reveals that in each reality, the Infinity Stones are different, making her weapon useless. So I guess w- what we were talking about in the previous episode, in the comics, the Infinity Stones outside of their home reality don't work. And this one, they do work. They're just slightly different. It's like they run on different frequencies. I guess you could say. So there you have it. There's our answer so far. Will it get expanded? Probably. As Ultron is making no headway in destroying these pesky little multiverse guardians. What was her name? Guardians of the multiverse. Uh, Yeah. Guardians of the multiverse. Ultron realizes that all he has to do is kill Strange Supreme to remove the protection spells and launch a full frontal assault. This strobe effect bomb blast it's amazing one to look at. I thought this was a very interesting scene that we've seen prior, just playing with the animation and the colors. It blasts Nat and Cap to the Zola virus USB arrow from the previous episode that we saw it in. Nat and Cap race to reach Ultron to stop his attack on the team by trying to upload the virus into him. They're trying to they're gonna try it again. <laughs> That's what we're doing. She has more backup this time, so it should work. Yeah. Captain Carter's like, I'm the shield, you're the sword. And then in this instance, she's like, not a sword, more of an arrow. She's like, still you, both pointing. You go long, I go close, you go, and then distance. And then Captain Carter's like, got it, I know the plan. They knew the plan. They didn't talk about the plan, but they knew the plan. I, yeah. Right? Exactly. And then Natasha was like, meow, arrows. So, yes. <laughs> and then Captain Carter was like, Rah! and it was amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so as Nat uses her motorcycle to literally drive off of a skyscraper and say, this is for you, Clint, shoots the arrow at Ultron while he's distracted with everybody else. Peggy Carter runs and jumps off of a skyscraper to piggyback onto Ultron. And one of the coolest looking scenes in this show as Peggy is ripping back the Ultron mask to reveal Vision's face gets shot directly into his eyeball with the USB. I mean, that's where his USB port is. I thought it would be his butt, but, yeah. but it's really the eyeball. 
You would think the butt, but it's yeah. your eyeball. Or belly button. One of the two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unless you're Kyle XY, who remembers that series. He had no belly button. I remember seeing so much about that series and never saw a damn episode about it, but Me? didn't want Me to but. because he didn't have a belly button. No belly button. Weird. I don't yeah. like it. Kyle XY? More like Kyle, Kyle X no. No. And O. <laughs> Kyle <No>. X no. <laughs> <laughs> but this little partnership here is chef's mwah kiss this it's so good again this show is really showing that just really showing us different types of relationships that we haven't even begun to see yet is 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 bellissima is so beautiful that's why i'm i'm wait i can't wait for no way home because it's gonna have spider-man and dr strange even though if this isn't even our dr strange i'm just excited to see them together more uh, uh dr strange in sweatpants yeah, he's What's allowed happening? to wear sweatpants. sweatpants. He still has the cloak on, probably. Yeah, yeah, and a cape. But it's just <laughs> like we're already getting something so different. It's wild. Yeah, that's Sweat- why I probably it's probably not him. I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's an upper crusty kind of guy. But anyway, we'll see. Up and crusty. Upper crusty. What is upper crusty? He's a doctor. He's rich. He drives fast, expensive cars. He has no time for peons. That's not telling me what up up upy crusty. Me, upper what? crust, uh, like the upper crust. He's upper crusty. He turns his nose up at the pawn. Oh, I'm like, you can keep saying He's it. a it's... doctor. He's got I... money and he's got brains. What? Upper crusty. Are you from the 40s? What's happening? I'm everything. <laughs> I have never in my existence of life heard uppy cr- what upper crust? I keep I'm not going to tell you because I like that you keep trying to refer to bluey keepy uppy. I really do. Bluey, keep you happy. If, if you oh, haven't watched mind. Bluey. Second episode in a row. We've recommended that, so I think you guys should watch it. Y'all, just check out Bluey. Next season of the podcast, A Bite of Bluey. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh. All right. So Natasha manages to defeat Ultron by injecting him with the, a- with the AI copy of Hydra Scientist Zola, as she and the late Hawkeye previously attempted. While Zola is infecting Ultron, Killmonger dons Ultron's suit stones included which surprise killmonger reasons that he can use them to fix their worlds and prepares to slaughter the heroes when they refuse to go along when they refuse not to go along with his plans wait refuse to go along with his plans i just did two double negatives which means it didn't work anyway i corrected myself so that's probably why he was in this team to begin with but uh, he's doing exactly what thanos my white valentino (laughs) man You're staring at me. <laughs> yes, it is two of us, so I'm gonna look at you. Look somewhere else. My white, my, my white Valentino back. He's doing exactly what Thanos <laughs> was advocating for why he wanted the stones. He wants to fix the world that it's his way or the highway. He's oh my the one god! That knows I everything. thought you were just saying in this moment that now I understand why Thanos Thanos wanted to use the stones to snap Derek out of existence. Also that. Who okay, Recorded. listeners? Who do you think would have been snapped? Oh, me, Derek. <laughs> Immediately, I, I like how we know it's random, but it's like, would you be snapped? Probably, yeah. Bef- right before he even before, as, as soon as he had the thought of snapping, I would have been like, uh oh, something's wrong. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, and then I would have been real hurt. I would have had so much FOMO when I came back. I'd be like, what did you guys do for five years? You had parties. I didn't look like a party. <laughs> Some people had to have parties. <laughs> no. Yeah. Who? People had birthdays. <laughs> it's okay. The holidays. Probably. I guess there I mean, were still turkeys. Thanksgiving for those that got, celebrate. They could have gotten snapped as well. It was all living things. Yeah. Oh. So then we hear an "Oh no no no!" I am afraid the armor belongs to me. Says Zola. He is now in control of Ultron's body. He manifests in his torso, much like he traditionally appears in the comics. Fun fact. Just saying, that's how old, that's how Zola looks in the comics. I didn't know that. I thought yep. that they were giving a nod to Krang from the Ninja Turtles. No, and I <laughs> had a feeling you were going to say that, so I didn't write it in my notes. <laughs> he looked like Krang! Yeah, but that's what he looks like in the comics. He's in, a, he's in the stomach of a body? Yeah. But of whose body in the he comics? He just makes a... Oh, okay. Just the like body, a body he can control. Body. Yeah, and it's weird because sometimes, like, the head of the body is like 
really teeny tiny. It's like a device of some sort. Ugh. It's really weird. But it was kind of cool to see it in live action because yeah. I don't think they would ever show it. Or it was cool to see an animation. I don't think they'd ever show it in live action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would look a little too weird. I'm going to agree. Yeah. So anyway, predictably, Killmonger and Zola both make grabs for the Infinity Stones. At this point, Strange Supreme realizes that the hero's true purpose was to separate the stones from the body, which gives him the chance to trap Zola Tron and Killmonger in a pocket dimension, much like how he ended up in his episode. So that's when the Watcher shows up. Surprise, surprise, right at the end when everything is done. We d- we find out that he knew everything that was going to happen. Like, he picked this team for a reason. I get it. He, like, Doctor strange us from Infinity War where he saw all those possibilities mm. of the outcome. But when I saw him, I was like, where are you? Where have you been? Have you still been watching? Watching. You've already interfered enough. Interfere some more. <laughs> I mean, there's just, like, a piece of me that's just, like, what is the point of the Watcher? If he can't interfere... What's the point of him watching? Well, they used to, but they were interfering too much. Is he like an eternal? No, I mean, but they're, he's, a, he's a celestial being. There's like a whole hierarchy with the cosmic things. I'm going to wait until the Eternals come out to really get into all that Draw stuff. Draw me a tree of the celestial beings, please. Because it gets weird. So I, oh, I would yeah. just... You know, like, we're, we're all better off if I don't think about but it it's too just, hard. It's just one of those entities where their whole job is to record history and just to watch history. They're not supposed to interfere. Anyway, I think it's kind of cool. It would be a cool job. I'd be just sitting there and be like, that's cool. Oh, like, don't like, make that mistake. Yeah, you're like, uh-oh. Oh, gosh, you guys. That's it. <laughs> Strange Supreme agrees to watch over the trapped villains and make sure they don't escape. Since Strange is already in a pocket dimension, it's pretty much a pocket dimension within a pocket dimension. Some would call that pocketception. Whoa. The watched becomes the watcher. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, because Strange has to watch them. Yeah. Inside a pocket dimension. Where he's being that kind of sucks. Like, why make him go back to that? He's like, I thing. guess because demon stuff is coming out. Everybody has to go back to their original spot except one people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the members are returned mm-hmm. to their realities <laughs> at the moment they left. Peggy understandably wants to go back to be with Steve, but the Watcher <gasps> tells her the world still needs you. She hasn't gone through everything that the Steve we know has, so she does still need to stick around. Heartbreaking. She looks right into his glow eyes and she says, haven't I earned my happy ending? Yeah. <gasps> You have. Oh, and then she turns around and she and her beautiful shield just like fades into the light. Dang. Yeah. Dang. Real sad. And do you want to make it even more sad? Let's go. <laughs> Since Black Widow from the Age of Ultron reality is the last person alive there, she understandably also refuses to return, which is sad. Black Widow's character is just sad and lonely. Everybody she loves dies. She dies She's always left alone, and she always has to make the hard choices. And she's like, do I have to literally go back to where nobody else exists? Which is really sad. But I'm glad he kind of, he kind of convinced, the the conversation that they both have, I think, is pretty important. And we get a little tiny tidbit of what the Watcher thinks of all this. And she's like, you just watched everybody die, my whole world. You watched it get nuked. Like, what the hell? And he's like, well, you mean more to me than that. But nothing else. That's all we get. We get a little tiny tidbit, tidbit. I'm expecting that we find out a little bit more. Every night before he goes to bed, he gives each of the multiverses a small little kiss on the forehead. I love you. I love you. Kippy kissy kissy. <laughs> Bob's Burgers reference. I'm sorry, guys. From like season four. Yeah. <laughs> Quip a kiss at Island. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, she is sent to the universe where Black Widow and a bunch of other Avenger candidates were slain by Hank Pym. And defeats the world-conquering Loki. So she gets put into that one. So we know it's that one because we saw Steve and Captain Marvel, the only ones fighting Loki-looking soldiers. And this is the final piece of the what-if puzzle with all of the episodes being represented in this final one. Oh, yeah. Yep. All of them tie back together Mm -hmm. in some way. Mid-credits, because it's not done, and it's the only mid-credits or post credit scene that we get for this entire series. Peggy suggests that she returns to World War II as a reward, as we saw, but the Watcher puts her back in place. Back at the S.H.I.E.L.D. vessel, 
Her universe's Black Widow, her BFF, reveals that she's found a ship container that... Shipping container. Ship container? Is it a shipping container? Shipping container. Right. It's a shipping container that goes on a ship. It's a ship shipping container. Absolutely. A anyway, cargo shipping container. She tells Peggy, you'll be interested to see what's inside. Peering in, she sees a hydro stopping armor, and apparently somebody's inside. Who else could that be aside from Steve? Wink, wink. So it's interesting. I mean, can we assume that this is this universe's Winter Soldier situation? So then we'll finally get a cap and Winter Soldier smoochy smooch. <gasps> Delightful. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. She got her happy ending, and the Watcher was like, just go. Just go. <laughs> You'll see, wink. Exactly. Watcher, <laughs> wink. Wink. So we can assume that this will definitely be a plot point in season two, maybe. Who That's knows? If Unless we it's even just get to nine see new plots. I mean, there is a lot more characters that have been introduced since then, so I don't doubt it. I mean, they could literally do a whole episode on any of the characters. The guy that like told Spider-Man to do a flip but and also was filming in Shang-Chi could do a whole episode about him. Yeah. What if he didn't film Spider-Man flipping? Totally. And like, what if the second season of What If didn't follow the the like characters of the first couple of phases? Oh yeah, Marvel. for sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, what if yeah. they took actual characters that you don't know that well? I think that there was AC Bradley, the writer. He's been very vocal about a lot of things. He did say something that Phase Four should make it into Season Two. Mm. And Shang Chi wouldn't be any different. I was mm. like, "Oh my god, we're gonna get a Shang Chi one already!" I'm here for it. I want a Katie one. <gasps> I want one where yeah. Katie is Shang Chi and becomes the master of the Ten Rings. Oh, that'd be cool, right? Yeah. Hopefully, he's good with an arrow. <laughs> yeah, he's great. <laughs> so, final thoughts with this show. We we'll rank the episodes in order and kind of give our final thoughts with this. We're not going to do a whole separate episode to kind of wrap up everything why not do it here because these episodes have been running a little shorter just because this content is a little shorter so why not put it at the end so ranking them yeah all nine yeah worst to best yeah go all right number nine. Oh, he's prepared oh yeah i got it written okay i made a list what if killmonger killed tony stark do i have to give my reasoning or do i just go down the list what if killmonger rescued tony stark how about he- that but what made it funny is what you said is oh. what happened. Oh, weird. <laughs> Wait, I took these from I took these from IMDb. Anyway, maybe I just typed it wrong. Whatever. <laughs> no, but I it thought anyway. it was funny because I was like, that's fucked up. All right. They should have just gotten to the point. No, but why is that one? Your it last was one? boring. Really? It was boring. It was like ah. more of a political thriller. We knew exactly what he was doing the entire time. There was no twist there were no surprises it was like oh yeah he's just gonna kill everyone and he did mm. true boring true okay yeah. continue um eight what if the world lost its mightiest heroes seven what if zombies mm. six what if thor were an only child while it was a good break from all the serious stuff it was sort of a floofy fluffy episode okay um let's see number five what if ultron won four what if dr strange lost his heart instead of his hands Three, what if T'Challa became a Star-Lord? Two, what if the Watcher broke his oath because it finally tied everything together? (coughs) And number one was the first episode, what if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? Because Captain Carter, gosh darn it, is my favorite character from this entire series. That's really interesting, though. Why? No, I'm I'm saying that's interesting that out of all of them, the first one is your favorite. Yeah. Wow. I think it did a really nice job of taking the storyline, giving it a really good twist that was sort of believable, giving power to a really great character that we never got to see really flourish, and then creating this awesome hero that we love. I'm here for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I like it. I would have never thought we would have seen Peggy Carter in any medium outside of the like three comic appearances that she's had. Right. So I'm not Peggy Carter, but Captain Carter. You mm-hmm. guys know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Very interesting list. Do you want to hear mine? I already know you're number one. No, you don't. Yes, Nobody I do. Knows. Yes, I do. Anyway, number nine for me is episode seven. What if Thor were an only child? I, for a grander scheme of things, it was fun, but kind of just like, meh. Sure. Yeah, I get that. Like, maybe that would be the one I could rewatch, but I'm somebody that likes 
a full connected beginning, middle, and end type of story. And that one was just like, okay, great scenes in it. Bigger picture doesn't really matter, except to introduce Thor Mm -hmm. in there. Number eight is episode five. What if zombies? Mm, I had a feeling. I, I liked it. But also, it's literally the title literally gives you the entire episode. Yeah. What if zombies happened? That's and, it. And I would say almost like out of all of the episodes, that's the one that least tied to this final episode. Yeah. We did get a portal full of zombies, which was cool. With, sure, zombie Captain America falling first. Yeah. But yeah. So that was it. Number seven. What if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? Whoa. That one's pretty low on my list only because I love Peggy Carter, but that is literally beat for beat, except for the ending, what happened in First Avenger. I felt like it was a good introduction, but it was like, okay, I need more. Give me more on why you're doing animation. What can be the possibilities of this? You know what I mean? It was like, I got it. I mean, yeah, I just put your favorite one as number four just to honor you, but it's fine. I see you did me dirty. It's fine. Whatever. Next one on my list is what if Killmonger res- rescued Tony Stark? I do like the interesting relationship between Tony and Killmonger prior to Killmonger coming out as a full-blown villain and killing everybody. Mm-hmm. But I, I like seeing how Killmonger works and how he weasels his way through things. I like villains like that. I like the sneaky type. Even though you can kind of see it coming, I just like the how it interacts with all of the characters in there. And he also murdered a bunch of them, which was very upsetting. Not why I like it, but it was shocking. (laughs) Next, I have, what if T'Challa became a Star-Lord? Great episode. I feel like that one was really the one where I was like, yes, need it. Then, World's Mightiest Heroes. What if the world lost its mightiest heroes? Great murder mystery. Then, what if Ultron won? What if the Watcher broke his oath? And then, of course, my number one is Doctor Strange lost his hands instead of his heart. Or lost his heart instead of his hands. Man, I'm just, like, mixing words lost up today. Lost his smart instead of his shark. Exa- Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I The number one for me is pretty obvious on why, but I just feel like that one was so well written. It was also one of the longest ones, so we really got to sit with Strange. And I just want, I want more of, like, who Strange is and what he'll do to get the outcome he wants. I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. That was going to be your favorite. Of course it was. I yeah. Mean, He's your man. He's your guy. Yeah. He's your go-to hero. I can't I can't help it. There's a sticker of him on your laptop that I'm looking at right now. It is true. It's a really nice <laughs> sticker. It's on my yellow laptop. It's there. <laughs> really pop. Really yeah. pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was your ranking. But like, what do you feel about the, the What If series as a whole? I like it. I think it's different enough from what we've seen. We have four... Marvel shows under our belt so far, all vastly different from the last one, which I am completely in love with because I feel like Marvel always gets the thing of like, it's formulaic, blah, blah, blah. Mm. While some of the stuff is a little formulaic, which comes with the property of superheroes, they're really trying to genre bend and tell different types of stories just in this one alone. They told how many different types of genres of stories? I think that's the beauty of What If is that it really can go into so many different areas because it's literally the question what if Mm -hmm. x Mm -hmm. you know and you can really play around with it you know for me personally i think that there were a few more lows than there were highs throughout the season i felt like you and i were maybe just me but i felt like a lot in a lot of our conversation we were getting very frustrated with just how hopeless they felt oh bleak, Um, very bleak very bleak very dark and and i think though having this be the last episode where it gave us what we wanted, right? It gave us hope. It also gave us everything coming together, which is something that we were really sort of thirsty for throughout this. So I was happy that it ended on a high, but it like started on a high for me and then it kept swinging low and then we managed to come back up. Right. So I'm not saying it's my favorite thing. It's obviously not the worst thing, but I don't think I would give it a rewatch. Mm. I feel like almost, it, to me, it kind of has the same beats as WandaVision. Only in that, like, the first episode was so exciting and it was so different. And then it just kind of gets a little, not weird, but you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not saying they're both exactly the same. I'm just saying, like, there was this kind of, like, swoop with WandaVision where, like, you're getting intrigued. You're like, I'm not too sure what's happening right now. And then all of a sudden it all tied together. So it's one of those things where the ki- I feel like they're kind of making fans wait. Like, you have to sit with the story. You have to see where it's going. 
and then they'll reveal. Yeah, I mean, the I thing. think that's a part of storytelling, right? Is that you in 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 good storytelling, you have to grab the attention of the person. Right. Then you have to fill in all the plot points, which can be tedious and a little boring. And then you get to the climax where things get crazy. Um, I just thought here, like we said before, it was just so it was like down in the doldrums. So that's that was the only thing with this for me was that it was it felt heavy a lot of the time. Hmm. I like it, which it's interesting, like especially between you and I, you typically don't like to watch things that are heavy or, mm. you know, tend to be. What's what's a better word than heavy? Dark. Yeah, I dreary, would say dark, dark, murdery. Like, like Handmaid's Tale. No. Like I I like the books. The show's okay. I keep watching the show just because I started watching it. Why the Last Man? I'm typically like that's my type of thing yeah. that I watch. And Derek is like, let's put on Thirty Rock for the love of God. <laughs> that's my go to bed show. No, I know, but I'm saying like that's your tip of like you like things that will that make you feel good. Yeah. And I, I tend to gravitate towards the things that might be a little darker, which yeah. I don't know what it says about me, but... <laughs> 30 Rock, Drag Race, Sex mm-hmm. Education, oh, Great British good. Baking Show, mm-hmm. yeah, Ted Lasso, those are my jams. Yeah. I right. want to feel emotion, I want to feel moved emotionally, but I don't want to feel emotionally manipulated. Ah. <laughs> what? Figured it out. <laughs> It's the point of the show. You feel it like it's a personal attack. Right. That's what you're right. Saying. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I give it, I give it like two, two little thumbs up. You know, it was good. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't, you know. Meh. All right. We'll leave it at that. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I had to rank, if I had to rank all four Marvel shows, uh, uh. let's do that real quick. Okay. All four of them. WandaVision would be first. Yep. Loki would be second. Uh huh. Falcon and Winter Soldier would be third. What if would be fourth? Uh, I would change it. Okay. I would. You do... would swap Loki and Falcon, wouldn't you? No, I I'd <gasps> swap Falcon and What If. Whoa, we Falcon would be last. Yeah. Oh, it was a little drama y and thriller y. Yeah. It hmm. it felt like, I mean, I've never seen an episode of Agents of Shield. But it felt like a like an ABC drama. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was also kind of clunky. I agree, but it's I think I like I think I like the characters a little more. But that's just my ranking. Hey, y'all, comment below. Out of those four series, what is your <laughs> ranking? <laughs> All right, well, that's it. What ifs wrapped up? What ifs wrapped up? But the season itself is not wrapped up. So of course, it's special segment time. The so last one. the final installment of things that make you go what? <laughs> so. <laughs> to honor this season and all of the great conversations we've had, I would like to dedicate this final segment to a topic that came up multiple times throughout poop. No, why? You had, you started it with poop. You're ending <laughs> it with poop. I thought we finally made it through an episode without saying no, poop. No, <laughs> and I felt really great about this because you said that uh, you thought Ultron's USB port was in his pooper. Oh. So, right on trend. Right on trend. Okay. So. Oh, no, I did. No, I said but. You said okay. but. You said but. We almost made it. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. So, here are five fecal facts to no. make you go, what? No. <laughs> One, poop is mainly made of bacteria. <laughs> While there is food and water in there, 50 to 80% is made up of the dead bacteria that was living in your intestines. So, wash your hands. Exactly. That's exactly the point. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm already done. <laughs> Two. Duty is brown <laughs> due to a combination of two things, broken down red blood cells and bile from the intestines. Both oh. contain a chemical called stercobalin, which colors the bodily byproduct. Wait, so poo is blood? Dead, dead, dead blood cells. cells. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And bacteria and well, food and water. Brown apparently. and red are kind of like in the same like, thing. It's like a rusty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Three. Uh. Perfect poops should no. be one shape and one shape only. Log. Circle. <laughs> Damn it. Did you say long? L- log. Oh. Log. <laughs> I think you said long. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> they should be 12 feet long. Uh, <laughs> not only should they be logs, but they should they should sink. Buoyant browns are a no-no. Stop. According to the Stop. <laughs> according to the Bristol stool scale, no. there are seven types of poop. Somebody 
No. Yeah, it's There's like poo dog scientists. Yes. <gasps> yes, the the Bristol stool scale. <laughs> Look it up for all seven types of poop. <laughs> or wait, no. What? What? What are the seven types of poop? Oh, it's like it's like um pebbles. <laughs> I'm serious. Like it's not like pebbles, no. but it's like small, small round um sausage made of small round. It what? Log, soft log. Um, something and then like water, like diarrhea. Is there one? Um, just asking for a friend. Is there one that's like, you know, the play doh spaghetti pusher thing where like you like multiple <laughs> strings of poop? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you don't put that thing. Oh in there. yeah, like I think that's like a step after log. <laughs> Look it up. I can't believe they have names for Look these. Look it up. Okay. Yeah, I'm they not don't really going have to. names. They're just like descriptors. I'm not going to look right, it up. That's fine. Four. <laughs> Corn is the always present poop partner. Stop. This is possible <laughs> due to the cellulose in the husk. The inner part of the kernel is digested, but the cellulose in the outer covering is not broken down, thus left shining in your logs. Okay. And, I can't take your sentences seriously. <laughs> and. Five, speaking of corn, apparently back in the day, folks would use corn cobs to, to wipe, wipe their butts. Ouch. Yeah. Apparently, early Americans would feed the corn to their pigs and then use the cob for a rear end cleanse. Yeah. I actually, fun fact, fun fecal fact. Yeah. Whatever you said earlier. Things that make you go what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew people that still did that. They're not our age or anything. They were what? older people. I come from the South. The South is weird. I mean, I guess it could scrape. Well, it's not. <laughs> this article also said that they wash it off and use it again. Yeah, but I mean, once it starts getting, I would assume when it gets. Po- once it starts getting crappy. <laughs> <laughs> Why could like, there's so many other things that you could use. Corn cob does not seem like the appropriate way. Like, I'm just saying, like, I do. You, I mean, it's just. I don't want to talk about you the logistics. You have a bucket of cob of next to the toilet. <laughs> I mean, then there's a there's a bucket of water that you just yeah, dump your dirty cob dunk in. Dunk your cobs. Log log your cobs. Cobs your cob your logs. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, what Might a high note. Cobs. What a high note to end this season on. Poop. <laughs> That's the book. Everyone poops, right? Everybody poops. <gasps> that is a book. It's right? a good book. It's a good book. Yeah. For kids, but everybody can learn. From it's that. a good buck. Everybody poops. Everybody's the same. Maybe you poop seven different types of ways, but it's all still poop in the end. We're and all a rainbow. Everybody still has corn. That's right. <laughs> poop is a rainbow of logs and pebbles. Corn and corn. And corn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> till next season. <laughs> all right, y'all. Goodbye. You know, every time you do this, I don't know how to end it. It's like you just talked about poop for 10 I minutes. I think it should just end with the, my final sentence. Rear end cleanse. End of episode. <laughs> zooby, 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 zoop, zoop. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to A Bite Of, artwork and editing by our own Noah. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at A Bite Of Pod and on Facebook at A Bite Of. If you have questions, recommendations, or just want to say hi, you can email us at abiteofpod at gmail.com. You can find us on all podcast platforms. Please be sure to rate and review to spread the word. Hope you join us next time on A Bite Of. Bye. Bye.